Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today's video is going to be about something that threatens to end the world as we know it. Overpopulation. It seems like just a short time ago the population was at 6,999,999,999 and all was right in the world. But then wouldn't you know it? Just a couple of seconds later, we hit 7 billion and OMG, what are we gonna do now? For the most part, those who are telling us about how precarious our situation is are college educated scientists, politicians, and media moguls. So, subsequently, the power of the dark side is very strong with them. So what we need to do is step back from that state-sponsored science for a minute or so and look at this problem using real earth science. And since math is a language of science, let's do us a little ciphering. First off, the earth is big. In fact, in scientific terms, it is what is known as very big. However, the greater part of the earth is covered with water and even though human beings get a huge amount of food from the water, we can't reasonably live on the water, so for our purposes we will only count the area of the earth that is land. Here in the U.S. we often determine land mass in units known as square miles, but for me it is very difficult to paint a clear picture of what I'm trying to get across using those particular units. Instead, I will use acres as my units of measure since I think that most people can get a visual image of what an acre is in their head. If not, at least most people are familiar with what a football field is. Daddy always said that an acre was the size of a football field, and that has stuck with me because it is very easy to picture in my head. Anyway, it has been determined that the land mass of the earth in acres is 35,794,240,000 acres. And we already said that there were 7 billion, people, 7 billion people living on that land mass. So simple math brings us to a figure of 5.11 acres of land for each and every man, woman, and child on the planet. That means that an average family of four would enjoy a spread of over 20 acres. So as I said earlier, that equals 20 football fields. So you see, the question isn't will the earth support 7 billion people? The real question is, will five acres support one person? And the answer is yes. In fact, there is a pretty much self-sufficient family living in Pasadena, California, USA that not only produces much of their own food, but has enough surplus to actually run a viable business from selling their excess. Their website is called Urban Homestead Path to Freedom. They have a family of four, and the land that they use to grow all of what they produce is only one-fifth of an acre. If they were using a closed system and getting that kind of results, then the earth could easily support 700 billion people. That is a hundred times more people than we are fretting over right now. But it isn't a closed system, because they have to bring in nutrients and water from external sources to keep everything going. However, there are other people out there who are producing food using closed systems, which means that not only do they produce all of their own food, but also produce all of the nutrients and water that they need to produce the food. This kind of arrangement is called permaculture and is pretty much how things were done here in North America for thousands of years before the Europeans got here. The word permaculture is a combination of the words permanent and agriculture. Many plants in a permaculture forest produce human food, but there are others that only produce food for the local wildlife, as well as plants that only produce food for other plants. I have heard it said that each acre of permaculture produces enough food to feed seven average people. I feel very comfortable using this figure since I spend enough time in the woods planting, digging up, and pruning my own permaculture forest. And even though it will be many years before my little forest is mature and self-sufficient, I can see that those results are quite attainable. And that figure doesn't even take into consider using wildlife as human food. 
If we figure on seven people per acre and multiply that figure by the total land mass of the earth, we come to a figure of over 250 billion people. That means that we can all relax and sit back and not even worry about this problem for at least another thousand years. We would still need a whole other 243 billion people before things start getting tight. So why are we being told that the earth is overpopulated if it isn't true? Well, you see, scientists, politicians, and media moguls, just like everybody else, think that this, uh, it is important to make lots of money, which means that they have to produce a product that they know they can sell for lots of money. And right now, the people who have all the money, the global elite, need to make people believe in overpopulation. Overpopulation propaganda is a product that they are more than willing to pay for with, you guessed it, lots of money. You see, this nation is what is called an oligarchy. I know that the battle rages over whether we are a republic or a democracy, but really, we are an oligarchy. An oligarchy is a form of government where a small group of powerful individuals rules over the majority. This is the way it has always been. It ain't nothing new. This is also why supposedly the greatest nation on earth is said to have a national debt. It is because the oligarchs tell us that we do. And guess who the debt is supposedly owed to? That's right, the oligarchs. They claim to have legal ownership of not only all of the planet's land mass, but the oceans as well. And the debt that we owe them is for them allowing us to exist on their planet. In fact, this arrangement is actually protected by law, and every nation on the earth has signed on to this agreement. Well, not really every nation, but almost every nation. At the time of this video's production, North Korea and Iran are still holding out. But don't worry, they'll fall into line as soon as the CIA is able to get around to executing their political leaders and replacing them with more suitable representatives. The problem isn't so much that we have to pay the global elite, or oligarchs, for the resources of our own planet, such as lumber, metal, fibers, food, and petroleum. We would use these things even if there were no powerful bullies charging us for them. But without the global elite, we would more likely use sustainable things such as permaculture as opposed to agriculture. A good rule of thumb to remember is this that the more sustainable a thing is, the less profitable it is for the oligarchy, and the more difficult it is for these global elite to fence in and protect. I'm also pretty sure that we would use more reasonable amounts of our resources as well. We don't only buy the things that we need from these powerful people, but they actually have permanent systems in place to convince us to buy things that we don't need, things that harm us, things that kill us, and even things to kill other people. We are told that we need warships, so we buy them by the thousands. And after a few years, we're told that we have to sink them to make artificial reefs to replace the natural reefs that were destroyed by the warships. Then we need more warships. When warships were made out of wood, we clear-cut nearly the entire planet for wood to make warships. Our world has burned through hundreds of thousands of years worth of resources in just a small amount of time. Not because we had to, but because it was profitable for the bullies, which is also known as good for the economy. Hundreds of years of programming by these few powerful families has caused mankind to be so blinded that for the most part, we as a race are no longer functional. Even now, as we are cutting down the last few trees and extinguishing the lives of the last few animals, we are being told of how good it is for the economy. This process of converting the earth into desert for monetary gain is called consumerism, and is for the most part the accepted religion of the realm. And the vast majority of this religion's adherents are okay with trading all of the earth's resources, which are precious, essential, and very real, for the economy, which is a total fiction of the imagination. As I just said, the economy is nothing more than a word used to replace the phrase profit of our owners. Now back to the topic of, of overpopulation. 
It is a fact that the Earth's natural forest as designed by our Creator could easily have supplied the nutritional as well as the housing needs of everyone on this planet for millennia. No problem. Our Creator is the true God. He knew what He was doing when He designed our home. The problem is that the false gods of consumerism, the oligarchs, our owners, have destroyed over 90% of the Earth's forest in the name of progress and they used us to do the actual physical labor. Every hole that we have put in the canopy of the forest is now either lifeless desert or deserts waiting to happen. Those bullies demand your worship in the form of continued profit. Excuse me. And know that if we were to discover the truth that humankind might get to work repairing the permaculture that was originally put here in time to save the planet, Profits would drop. People have to be made to believe in overpopulation because that makes everything that is happening now God's fault. And guess what? It's working. Most people don't even think about it. It's just a part of their mindset that the creation is somehow flawed and our only hope is that our political, scientific, economic, and spiritual leaders come up with some kind of solution. Trust me. They are working on a solution, and it has nothing to do with increasing the Earth's ability to feed and house its inhabitants. As long as destroying the Earth is profitable, saving the planet is not going to get on our list of things to do. Overpopulation is a myth, but the destruction of the Earth's ability to sustain the population is very real. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.